Hey YouTube, Do Yourself Junkie 369 and in today's video I'm going to be covering a comment that somebody left. Uh, hopefully he didn't think that I completely ignored his comment and didn't respond to it. I just wanted to take time to make a video. I felt like it'd be better than trying to type out everything. And basically the comment was in response to my video where I was doing the Pro Seal on the edge, trailing edges of the control surfaces. So you have the rudder and the elevators and also some Pro Seal on the trim tabs. And basically the comment was that this person had noticed some people using double sided sticky tape for the trailing edges. And that's true and even on vans they sell a 3M product that's double sided sticky tape specifically for the tra trailing edges. Um, what I know about that is a lot of people complain that the double sided sticky tape is not sticky enough. In that case what most people seem to point out is that it takes a little bit longer for this tape to set up compared to the Pro Seal. And then the other thing is it's really temperature sensitive. Pro Seal you have to worry about it being too hot and setting up too quickly. The tape seems to be you have to worry about it being too cold. With some people even using heat guns or hair dryers on their parts uh, before they put the tape on there and then even after they put the tape on there to basically get the tape to get really tacky and adhere to both surfaces. I would also like to point out that it has to be really thin. Some people have used different 3M products. Um, I have some notes here. Somebody said something about VR. BT tape, that's Victor Romeo Bravo. I'm not quite sure how that differs from the stuff that's on Vans. It's another 3M product. But uh, that tape, the person who used it said that it was too thick and it caused a whole bunch of bubbles and the parts wouldn't lay down flat. But that could have also been if he didn't let the tape tack up, you could end up with the same results. And the reason for that is the whole reason behind the Pro Seal is just to hold the parts together while you're doing back riveting. So you can't have Clecos in there, so the, the Pro Seal literally is to hold those two parts together. Now, on the flip side of that, is I've read somewhere about somebody thinking about using uh, an epoxy like JB Weld. And on that, I've used JB Weld on some aluminum before that I was trying to put together an aluminum frame that would hold an air filter and basically even with roughing up the aluminum when I put the JB Weld on there let it set up after 48 hours I went to pick it up and the frame flexed a little bit and all the JB Weld joints just popped because the JB Weld itself is pretty brittle and doesn't really have any flexibility to it versus the Pro Seal, which is really flexible. It's almost closer to RTV and some people have used RTV. The thing that I've heard there is you want to use the RTV for sensors possibly because that RTV doesn't have acetic acid, hopefully I said that right, which is an acid that's in most other versions of RTV and if you use an RTV with acetic acid in there it is corrosive on aluminum and so you might have some undesirable results using that anything other than the sensor safe RTV. Other than that it should work as long as you get the coating thin enough and you let it set up well enough that it's going to hold those parts securely together. Now on the other part of that is I don't really see using any of these methods for maybe the RTV would work it's kind of questionable though but for during the trailing edge on the rudder you don't really have to worry about anything but when you get into the elevators and those trim tabs you're putting in foam ribs that are held in solely by the Pro Seal or in my case Flame Master which are supposedly the same thing on those, that's, that's all that's holding those in there. And even the directions are different. 
on the trailing edges it doesn't say anything about worrying about primer being in there or scuffing up the surfaces even though I personally did that and it held really good and I think maybe it helped me get a straighter edge than I probably would have ended up with but on those ribs it specifically says hey don't get any primer in this area and hey rough it up with uh, 120 grit and make sure you clean it really good with acetone to make sure there's no residue there or grit from the sandpaper left over and basically whatever you use on these foam ribs that's the only thing holding it in there so I definitely wouldn't use the double sided sticky tape on that um, not quite sure on the RTV whether or not that would be a good way to go um, and that's part of the reason I used Pro Seal on the trailing edge actually because I knew I had to use Pro Seal or Flame Master on the foam ribs I figured I might as well use it on the trailing edge too instead of getting two different things to work with and as you saw in the video it, it's not really that big of a deal it doesn't stink as bad as I feel like people say it does but also might be a little less sensitive to that working around jet fuel and all other kinds of stuff that stinks <laughs> so I, I might not be as sensitive as some people are and uh, another thing is just have good ventilation have a fan going um, I had a fan going even though the garage door was shut because it was pretty hot and I was trying to bring in fresh air from the house to cool the garage down so that the pro seal wouldn't set up too quickly and I think that might have helped with the fumes of it as well getting that fresh air in so anyway uh, double sided sticky tape especially the 3M product that they sell in vans will definitely work for trailing edges just don't use it on the foam ribs and try to heat up your surfaces um, keep it keep them heated up as the tapes being put on there and then let the the tape set up at least I want to say well like the pro seal let it set up at least 24 hours with the tape you're going to have to do more than 24 hours you probably want to wait like three or four days for it to get a good adhesive grip between the tape and the the material that it's bonding to um, and then like I said if you get a different double sided sticky tape that's too thick that could cause puckering and your trailing edge to not be flat um, on that note the pro seal if you put it on too thick can do the same thing and I, I do have a, an area where the pro seal was fairly thick and it kind of built up a little bit of a, a bubble or pucker and luckily I caught that before the pro seal uh, set up so I was able to like really squish that down and get some of the pro seal mashed out of there um, one other side of that pro seal or double side sticky tape is it does lend to some vibration dampening and I guess before they went to this method there were micro cracks developing in the trailing edge so it does have some dampening properties and I think that's the big area where if you do go with the uh, epoxy type like JB Weld any vibration you get in there is just going to cause the epoxy to crack apart and if that cracks and separates out and can get out of there somehow then you have a void that now is going to have vibration occurring where two aluminum surfaces might be rubbing and next thing you know you've got uh, I believe it was a type of corrosion but basically you're going to have a whole lot of black aluminum slime powder type stuff coming out of anywhere where two metal surfaces are rubbing on each other I want to say it's called fretting but my, my memory on that's not very good I'd have to go look up all the different types of corrosion and figure out which one it is uh, as you originally I was going to do this video while sitting here deburring all the holes on the 
horizontal stabilizer. As you can see, my garage looks like a episode of Hoarders, I guess would be a good description for it. Uh, I was having a new roof put on the house and I had to bring a car into the garage and get it out of the driveway and then from there problems just compounded. I promise there is an airplane back there. It is safe, nothing's going to fall on it. But I need to get a lot of this junk cleared back out of here. I need to put my kayak back up on the ceiling where it's out of the way and get a work area back to where I can start working on this. On the plus side, I've finished all the homework, at least until next May. Um, hopefully I answered the question or covered a little bit more in depth about the uh, double-sided sticky tape. If you got any more questions, post them below. I'll try to answer them. Most of the time it'll be a couple short sentences rather than a whole video, unless it's something that takes a whole video to talk about. And please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll get up some more videos soon. Because there's everything I did after the uh, Pro Seal that I haven't posted yet. And I haven't had time to edit the videos and get them uploaded. So that's another thing I have to work on and catch up. Other than that, uh, next video I should have out is basically looking at the thought process that led me to deciding to build a Vans aircraft. And basically I'm going to start at the beginning of renting versus buying because that is, most people they'll go through tr flight training and they rent that entire time. And it's usually not until like midway through or after that most people start looking at buying. And so I view considering buying, buying an aircraft as kind of the starting point of, or the first stepping stone towards like, hey, I should, instead of buy, I should, or instead of rent, I should buy, instead of buy, I should build, that, that type of thing. Or maybe you go through all of them. Um, I'm also going to probably look briefly at co-ownerships and clubs. I'm not sure if I should do that in the same video. It might warrant a video of its own where looking at that, if you can get away with a club or co-ownership while you're learning or when you first start learning, it'll reduce your cost to get your private pilot certification by quite a bit. Anyway, look out for those videos. Hopefully I get them up maybe before the end of the week. I also have a couple chess videos and some sewing stuff I need to finish up that I started last year. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.